Hey guys, we're going to pay a chores here. I got Chris Flores, Lady River Catfish. What's going on, guys? We're here at the 2020 Catfish Convention or Catfish Conference, and uh, man, it has been a day. People are just rolling in these doors, and so many good people, man. I always feel like it's a family reunion for the catfishing family. And if you come to my booth, we've got a few things going on. Let me show you around. We got the. Uh, We've got the flathead rods over here, those are $79. Down the way over here, we've got the blue cat rods, those are $89. We've got both of them in, uh, in uh, spinning and bait casting. We're, we're doing a raffle giveaway at the end of the day. It is an uh, all expense paid fishing trip to come fish in New Mexico. I'll pay your flight, I'll pay your hotel, take you out on the boat, and uh, have a good old time, man. You got it. Of course, we got our uh, apparel, we got hats, we got shirts, long sleeves, short sleeves, hoodies, and whatnot. And then we got the uh, the original Timber King Cobra weights that uh, come in a DIY kit. You make these weights designed for Dragon Bait. Yeah, that's right. I haven't and done anything with it yet. No? No, I just don't have time to go fishing a whole lot, driving trucks, so yeah. mine's still sitting in the package and everything. It's yeah. waiting on me, though. I actually cut this one off the line that I had in the, tr in the trailer because <laughs> I, I needed a display, but you guys come down, check out the conference, and uh, look forward to seeing you guys. Yep. Hi, everybody. Chris Flores, Money River Catfishing. Come back next year. We'll get to see you. Team Bay Tanks here at Catfish Conference 2020 here in Robo, Kentucky. And we're going to do a little tank tour. So if you're not familiar with extreme bait tanks, we start off with our 20 gallon tank. These tanks are 26 inches tall. We started a short series. So we went down eight inches and we got a 12 gallon, which is 18 inches tall. We did the same thing with our 35, they end up with a 23. And our 50 gallon, they end up with a, a 32. So what's unique about these is we now offer different sizes and our website at extremebaitanks.com is set up as what we call the build a tank concept. Right. What that means is you go on, you log on, you find your tank based off your footprint and what you're trying to accomplish size wise and from there you can build the tank. Meaning you can add drain plugs, you can add skimmer kits, 110. Most of these are set up as 12 volt. The 110 has been pretty popular because when you're done fishing at the end of the day, plug it into your house you take off of your battery, plug into your wall, you can charge your battery knowing that your tank is running while you sleep. We already go up to, if you haven't seen already over here, the 100 gallon. 100 gallon tank, yeah. yeah. So basically they're in increments of 15, 20 to 35, right. to 50, to 65, which is over there in the corner, 80, which I don't have, to the 100. Right. So, ExtremeBaitTanks.com, if you need it, I could probably build it. We cut all of our own materials. These are all handmade by us with welders who have been certified to weld plastic. So they will circulate, oxygenate, and filter your water as good as anything that's ever been created. Okay. Yep. So you got like half of it with uh, pumps and everything and the filters and then the other yeah, half. Yeah, the inside one? Yeah, we can jump in. And it's important to understand too, when we talk sizes, we're yeah. talking the bait area. So for yeah. example, a 50 is actually 65 gallons of water. With the pump and everything. The 20 is 30. Area, yeah. So this is a 32 gallon, which is the bait area. We run off the sock filter system. The manifold pops out, all the water gets filtered through these socks. Right. When the water hits the pumps, they're infused with air through a Danco Venturi. Right. And push back in, and that's that cycle right. that we keep going on. And I was going to see if I had, yeah, right here. So this is an example of adding a 110 to a 12 volt. Right. So it's a separate unit. At the end of the day, you disconnect from the battery, you plug it right into the wall, and you get the exact same thing going on all night long without having to worry about draining your battery. Right. Now. Yeah. I like the old Southland uh, hose like you had in the other one over there. Yeah. The Southland back out and everything. Yeah, that was just something we'd come across. The Southland back or so if you don't build a drain in, yeah. a lot of guys will hook up a build pump to a hose and power right. that. But this is called, I call it a shaker valve. You yeah. You put it in the water, you give it a couple shake of shakes, it a few times. And it it. Right. Down, start flowing over. 
Hey, yeah. I want to show you something else that's pretty cool. This is the back data here of bait tank. We've been building these a lot for long-term bait storage, bait right. and tackle shops. So this is the 100-gallon bait tank. Again, 120 total. Yeah. There's your bait area. Pretty, pretty massive. Now on this one, this is actually going down to Lake Okeechobee. Yeah. It's got the filter socks in here, but it also has a, that skimmer. So this is the, uh, that's where the water can go in for the skimmer kit. So this will filter from the bottom up and the top down. There's no 12 volt in here. That's all 110. This is going to work strictly off of three 110s. If you come around on this side, another thing will deal. Sometimes they want to do, so you got a drain built into the bottom, right? Right here, you've never seen this. This allows you to flood the tank overflow. overflow. So if he wants to put fresh water, you can start pumping it with fresh water. As that water raises, this is right at the water line. All that nasty will come out until he's done. Water the water off. When that stops draining, you've reset your line. Right, right. Yeah, I like that. Yep. So, extreme bait tank. Oh, you got to know. That short 23, which is that middle one there. The middle one over there. We're doing a raffle. Right. Anybody that wants to give us their name, address, phone number, and email address, we'll enter them for the raffle. We're going to be down at ICAST in Orlando, Florida in July. We're going to do a drawing for that tank. Okay. Okay. So, if, you, if, they're, if you're interested, uh, Becky over here in the red... Way back here. She will collect your information, yeah. and all you have to do is email her at rwagner, yeah. W A G N E R, at extremebaittanks.com. Okay. And extreme is X T R M E baittanks.com. She'll put, she'll draw the card for you. You don't have to be present to win, and uh, wish everybody good luck. Okay. You can email that in to her and then... Yep, she'll fill the card for you. Be don't have to be present there. to register and don't have to be present to win. Okay, that's good. Yeah. We're just looking to collect some information now so we can, once we build a database, we can start shooting out some information yeah, right, to people. Right, right, right. Yep. That's what it's all about, right? You want to see a live well? Yeah, we can. Oh, this is pretty cool, too. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at it earlier, yesterday, and all that one. This, this is what I like. we, we built this for boats that doesn't have a live well or they weren't yeah. happy with their live well. So the 95 XL, this is... Oh, no, this one here is more like for yachts, not boats. For what? This is more like for yachts, not well, boats. Well, you got to have the this, floor space. This is pretty, this is pretty good size this here. This is a six foot. We built a five and a four. Right. Yeah. But it'll it'll do the same thing that our bait tanks. It'll turn the circulate, oxygenate, and filter the water. Right. So if you catch that fish, especially in these tournament fishing, right. you don't have to worry about the fish not making it the way in. Right. Yeah. Now, as a result of uh, this, you got the oxygen box. Yeah. yeah. This is this is pretty cool. Because if you already have a live well that you're happy, not, size wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We took everything out of the bait tank that makes a bait tank special. Right. And we put it into a box. Okay. So this is a submersible unit. Right. That'll go into your live well. It'll filter the water. It out. Pump, pulls the water through the filter. Right. And right before it gets introduced back to the live well, it'll pull up air from the air source. Yeah, I'm not sure. And spit yeah. it right out. So this will circulate, filter, and oxygenate your live well. Right. And we've got video of the catfish rolling right up on this thing like a baby could have one. <laughs> the joke is it takes one guy to put a fish in, it takes two to get them out. Yeah. And it really does an amazing job. Right, right. Nice resuscitator. I'm with Big Dick's Bait Netting, and this product is used to hold any type of soft bait, chicken liver, scallops, hot dogs, on your hook, where many times you lose the bait. This will ensure that that will not happen. It's a piece of tubular elastic netting. You tie a knot, and then you cut right below the knot. That creates a pouch. You flip it inside out and you put your bait here, bait in it, whether it's stink bait, shad guts, or 
chicken livers or anything. You put it in here. You want it to protrude through the holes. You want it to be really, really full. It's going to take on the color of the bait and the smell obviously is going to protrude through. Uh, the smell is going to come through very easily. Then what you do, once it's full, you're going to hold it together and you're going to twist it. That will close it up. You put the hook through where you twisted it and then you're going to put the, put the hook through the, the pouch one more time, a little deeper into the pouch, through the bait again, and it will not come off your hook. It will look something like this. It's a nice fold. Use it over and over again. It will not come off your hook. If you twist it first and then put the hook through, many times there's like a little opening here. You can stuff more bait in there if you need to. Um, but you will never lose your bait again if you buy Big Vicks bait netting, and it's very cost effective. So come see me at the show, Catfish Conference, and look for my bright green booth. Thank you so much. And you got a uh, website too, don't you? Oh, I got a website. Let me talk about that. So my website is bigvicksbaitnetting.com. You also can get this on Amazon. Um, this is not biodegradable. If you want something that's biodegradable, we also have it in the tubular gauze form. It's not quite the same material, but it's 100% cotton, and this will biodegrade if it by, by mistake falls off your hook. But I'm telling you right now, this is not easy to get off your hook. So, come to the show if you're here. Look me up on Facebook. Go to my website. Or call us in the office if you have any questions. Thank you so much. See you later. A noodle, stainless steel spring loaded, sets a hook for you. It's got three tension settings, high, medium, low, how hard you want it to set the hook. You bait it up, set it, throw it out, it's like jug fishing. When the fish grabs your bait line and takes off with the bait, they trip it like a mouse trap, and it sets a hook, just like you've jerked a rod at the perfect time. We're at the... We're at the Kentucky Fish Kentucky Expo. Uh, Catfish Convention in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. We're at the Catfish Expo in Louisville, Kentucky. Come by and see us. that either. <laughs> the, uh, and you said you got the other one, a camouflage stick? No. We have a limb, we have a limb line version of it. That's the, uh, that's, that's the jug, that's the jug, the jug, jug line. Version. And this is the limb line. Lines. It does the same thing. High, medium, low. You set it. The fish grabs your bait. Sets the hook. Ties them back to the limb. Yep. That's the ultimate limb line. And then this is the assassin. It's for people that want to camouflage their limb line. By the part of the limb, part of the tree is coming down. Yep. The, uh, you got the uh, quick connects up here. Yeah, these things yeah. are the... We didn't want nothing you had to tie in the tree, so they come with the carabiner hooks. You just wrap, snap, and you got them hung. You can take them down that easy, too. Yeah, you don't even have to cut it or nothing. You don't have to cut it. Yeah. And the uh, camouflage one does the same as this here. It has the little pull down and yeah, they, spring, it's got the spring low. action, too. You got high, medium, and low. It sets just like the, the other ones. Sets the hook, ties them back to the noodle, ties them back to the limb. It won't pull no further because of the little string here. Right, safe. Yeah. It won't let, them, it won't let you hyper extend the spring. Right. Ties them back to the noodle. To the limb line. Uh, that's all right. Y'all have a good one. Come all right. Just showing off some of my wares here. I'm Brian with B&B Custom Outdoors out of Calhoun, Georgia. Uh, we'll start with the beavers here. We've got some... Uh, Wild caught beavers. Uh, these were caught um, actually at the municipal airport in Calhoun, Georgia. They were a nuisance there, bringing in the ducks and those ducks, ducks and airplanes don't mix. This is a, a wild beaver pelt, fully tanned. I did the tan myself and come up with this beautiful, nice white flesh side. It's a nice machine washable tan. It can be washed up to seven times, and after that seven times, you got to you got to re-oil this side. But it'll last for many, many, many years. Beautiful, beautiful fur. It's part of what made this nature. We got this little little one. We got a nice big one here. A little redder color, especially towards the tail. As it was able to keep the ears on him. Beautiful, beautiful fur. And then 
Uh, he's got one more great big beaver. He does have a little small spot on him. They were fur, uh, they got the nose, nose and, and the eyes and everything. Just better to waste them. Better, right. better to just waste them and throwing them out. Also, tan the tails. Try not, again, try not to waste. I believe you're big, not waste. Uh, these are these are the same beaver tails off of these beavers. This is fully tanned leather. Uh, you can use this for knife sheaths, wallets, uh, anything you can use normal leather for. Uh, I can show. This is my personal card wallet here that I, I keep in this in my pocket every day. And you see how it's it's wet. It's, Got a nice shine to it. It's still like the day I made it. We got a few other things here I'll show you. Um, got uh, good old deer grunts. Um, again, handmade. Everything I have here is handmade. Right. Um, just a basic deer grunt, but uh, open it up. Just to read. Close that tube back down. Now you got your dough bleed. Uh, uh, here you go. We got several of them. We got some handmade duck calls. I cut the cut the tone board myself, cut the reed myself. Sign and date and number. It even kind of sound like a duck. <laughs> There you go. We got some handmade powder horns and, and uh, Hospitals bags. Uh, these uh, these are actually fairly authentic. These came from the book, Jim Webb's book, uh, Powder Horns Bags and the Cookies from the Southeastern Appalachians. Uh, and I copied them off of his book. Um, so you got a nice um, octagon neck on that horn, small Hospitals bag. Southeastern bags tend to be a lot smaller than the big fur trade bags from the right. north and the west. Another old, old style bag. Again, all this is done by hand. I do all this myself. We got the spout on this one is faceted. Right. Ready to go hunt? Put some powder in it, you're ready to go. Finally, this is where all this nonsense started was my love of fishing, and so I've got some handmade fishing rods here. Um, these are probably some of the best blanks that you can get on the market today. This this is Rod Geeks. Rod Geeks blank. They basically bought the rights to uh, make St. Croix tankers. Uh, St. Croix was, I had to stop. They had to stop manufacturing rods for custom builders because they were getting so much demand for the ready-made rods. Uh, St. Croix, or uh, rather, uh, Rod Geeks bought the rights for those papers. So this is a Rod Geeks uh, heavy power, 7 foot 6, 14 to 30 pound test line. Ready to go fishing. Uh, I got it. I wrapped glow in the dark thread on the tanks for, uh, on the temp river for uh, fishing at night. Each rod is wrapped, or excuse me, each guy is wrapped and underwrapped to save the blank. All this is done by hand. I do all the wrapping myself, all the finish myself. I like that was The blank goes all the way through the bottom. Uh, I read this all myself, get it fit down just right. And I have a variety. This is a car this is all carbon, all uh, fiber graphite rod. Um, <clears throat> These, these ones are S glass, so it's a mixture of fiberglass and, um, and carbon. And you see, you get the, the light weight of the fiber, of the carbon rather, but then you get the tip of the fiberglass. That, that tip, you barely touch, you're going to see any bite. You're going to know it's there. But yeah, this is, this is pretty light rod. This one is rated from uh, 12 to 25 pounds. Uh, these ones, this is the same S class here, the same idea, but it's a heavier rod. This one's rated up to 40 pounds. Right. But even this 40 pound rated rod, extraordinarily light. You fish this thing all day, not get tired. And you watch this tip. Remember, 40 pound line rated. 
you won't see anything that touches that thing. Yeah, that's a lot. That's, that's about it. I, I got some, these are some good old mud hard gator glass rods. These are heavy. <laughs> but this, this, you put this in your, in your monster rod holder. Right. You that off the back of your boat. And you won't be able to pull in anything you want to on this. This is a big right. old heavy rod. But again, as with all my rods, I do all the work. All right. the hand wraps, all hand finished, hand fit the grips. Um, just, I take my time and I do it right. Because I, I, I take pride in my work and I want somebody to, when they put their hands on one of my rods, I want them to love the rod. I want them to that's, that's their favorite rod. Right. So that's what I'm all about. There you go. All right. Thanks, man. Never seen it. Okay. This is where we're going to get into this. Okay. Hold the finger on the eye. Pop that thing open. Once you slide that thing open, load the bait inside of it. Once the bait's inside, pop that thing closed. You hear that click? It's locked. It's not coming open. Made the soft silicone, it's gone. Virtually needless, made the most on hook, so I'm getting that in the Load whatever you want inside of it, whether it's an artificial bait, your chicken livers, your, your, your garlic scents, whatever you need inside of it, doesn't get any easier. Put attachments on it that are available through baylock.com or whatever attachments you want on it to dress it for whatever species you're going to use. Sanitize and put your spawn in there. It's going to tie in those spawn sets and stand inside that thing. Yeah. That really means you can it. Good for livers, oysters, bubble gum, whatever you want to put in there. Exactly. Cheese baits, cheese whiz, mayonnaise. Put money in there and it ain't going to come out. Possibilities are endless. Whatever you want to put inside it, put it in there. This is how they look packaged up. Got some attachments here. Buzz bait attachments. Got a pretty cool setup. Put trailers on them.